You know, as a young kid, we do some pretty stupid stuff that could potentially leave us in a lot of danger. You know, activities such as riding a bicycle without a helmet, perhaps inserting objects into an electrical socket, or even stealing your grandmother's Dodge Durango and going on a joyride to Walmart. So you can't really relate too much to that last one there. Well, that's exactly what seven-year-old Latarian Milton did back in 2008. On April 27th, 2008, seven-year-old Latarian Milton stole his grandmother's van. His motive for this was because, well, he was mad at his mom for refusing to let his friend come in the house and watch cartoons with him. So to get back at her, Latarian and his seven-year-old friend took his grandma's car keys and hopped in the car for a joyride, driving several miles to the city of Palm Beach, Florida. As the ride began, a motorist noticed the van and and called police notifying them of a driver who looked far too short to see over the steering wheel and suspected it to be a child driving the car. Meanwhile, Latarian had run over two mailboxes, hit two parked cars in a Costco parking lot, and struck two moving cars near a Walmart. The joyride would finally end at the intersection of Consumer Lane and Investment Drive when Latarian hit the roadside curb and the impact would snap one of the vehicle's axles and wheels. The boys, however, were not injured. Latarian was eventually arrested by police, but was not taken into custody, rather he was released back to the custody of his parents. And the following day, West Palm Beach, Florida would release this interview that would make Latarian Milton essentially a viral internet success overnight, or a meme, should I say, and this is the interview that got him famous. Latarian Milton is not your typical seven-year-old. Few his age have ever driven an SUV up and down several busy streets. It all started at his mother's townhouse. Latarian says he took the car keys and hopped into his grandmother's Dodge Durango. I took my grandma car because I got mad at my mom. And then I saw him have my friend come in and he smoked with cigarettes. So I yanked the, I yanked it. I yanked the um, thing. Do it because it's fun. It's fun to do bad things to drive into a car. But did you know that you could perhaps kill somebody? Yes, but I wanted to do hood rat stuff with my friend. You know, sometimes you really just want to take your grandma's car and go smoke with cigarettes. So for several weeks, this interview featuring Latarian sort of became front and center on the internet. People were really intrigued at this kid. And I think with his age being only seven years old, a lot of viewers were sort of asking this question, like if Latarian is out here stealing cars at age seven, I mean, what is he gonna be doing as an adult? This guy's gonna turn into some sort of career criminal. And in addition to this, I remember a lot of comments at the time sort of casting him out as some sort of lost youth and some distasteful comments sort of making prejudice upon his race and upbringing and his family's financial status. It was clear, at least to me, that there was something going on with Latarian's behavioral side, like something wasn't right with this kid. And it wouldn't be long for Latarian to end up in the news again in May of 2008. And this time, it was for beating up on his grandma in Walmart. While shopping with his grandmother at Walmart, Latarian asked his grandmother to buy him some chicken wings. When she refused, he threw a tantrum and started hitting her. Later that afternoon, he would be picked up by police and taken to the hospital for a 72-hour psychiatric hold. It was in this interview that his grandmother exposed the fact that Latarian's mother and father had some sort of physically abusive relationship in the past, and she was concerned that this taught Latarian that it was okay to hit people. There are new problems for the seven-year-old who stole his grandmother's SUV and went on a dangerous joyride. His latest incident took place in a popular discount store and has landed him in a West Palm Beach hospital. Ted White joins us live with this story. Ted? Latorian Milton exposed. We've seen him as a playful and happy seven-year-old. At other times, he's apologetic. I'm sorry what I did to my grandma's truck and I'm sorry what I did to all you people in the hospital. And I love you and I hope you be in prayer. But then there's his wild side. Can I leave now? But on Monday, Lotarian took his bad boy image to a new level inside this Lake Park Walmart. The problem began when Latarian asked his grandmother to buy him some chicken wings. She said no. He got mad, walked over and ordered them anyway. When his grandmother confronted him about it, Latarian snapped. It started hitting me. They started hitting me in front of the whole Walmart and everyone in there was upset. And I know what causes this behavior because all he's ever seen 
was his parents do physical, abusive, and verbal things. It's unknown if Letarian was diagnosed with any kind of behavioral mental disability at the time of his hospital stay, but certainly the problems were piling up at home. So Letarian would continue to appear in the news again and again, and this time three months later, it was this interview sort of catching up with Letarian and his grandmother, and it was in this interview that they exposed a spicy nugget that Judge Judy had planned on having Letarian and his grandmother come on the show. We're going to the Judge Judy show. Encouraged by show producers, Latarian Milton's grandmother says she plans to sue her daughter, blaming Latarian's mother for allowing him to steal her SUV, then drive off. Because she told me to get out of the house and leave, so I picked up the keys and left. Vakita Stratford says she's taking her daughter before sharp-speaking Judge Judy. Listen to me. You yeah. want to Hoping to teach her responsibility. So she's heard it from everybody but Judge Judy. Maybe something Judge Judy could say. I don't know. Well, and if you wanted me to play that clip of Latarian Milton on Judge Judy right now, I'm hate to be the bearer of bad news, but that clip doesn't exist. And probably for the better. Vakita, Latarian's grandmother, said that the show had requested she sue Latarian's mother, her own daughter, for $5,000 to pay for the damages made to her SUV. The SUV that Latarian stole and took for a joyride. However, Judge Judy issued a statement that she canceled the taping after finding out about this shady deal. Quote, Judge Judy does not believe in fostering litigation, and if that is what happened, then canceling the case was the only option. So it may have just been a move for Judge Judy to sort of protect her reputation, but in a grand scheme of things here, I'm glad that she didn't condone the actions of Letarian by putting the family on the show. As this theme of Letarian continuously showing up as a really young child, I mean, he's only eight years old at this point, he appears in the media so much that I feel it could be potentially dangerous for a kid to have so much exposure, especially highlighting bad things that he had done. Letarian inadvertently had become the poster child for a failed youth, and his behavior played into ignorant racial stereotypes. And it almost seemed like the media was encouraging his behavior. When you think about the chicken wing story, for example, that had no business being on television. That was a personal family matter which should have not left the household. I mean, come on. If it was just some random kid having a temper tantrum, it wouldn't make the news. But because it was Letarian, this made it into a juicy story and it played into the bias that everyone had already developed towards him. And this behavior would be more and more enforced whenever he was invited to go on Tosh.0 oh and speak with Tosh. In March of 2010, almost two years later, a 10-year-old Letarian appeared on Tosh.0 oh, where Daniel Tosh candidly interviewed him about the infamous joyride he had when he was seven. They also perform a skit where Letarian goes around showing Tosh how to do hood rat stuff. Now in your video you said it's fun to do bad things. Is it still fun to do bad things? Yes. Do you think you could show me some hood rat stuff? Yes. Nice. All right, so we just open it up and then we play in it? Yeah, that's all we do. Oh, this is going to be fun. This is going to be fun. Oh! You want to see Avatar 2? It's in 4D, only five bucks. Or three for 20. I'm just going to lose it. Why did we do this again? I don't know. All right. <laughs> and look, I don't want to be the fucking stick in the mud here. Like criticizing Tosh for having Letarian on the show. I just have a problem with the encouragement of his bad behavior. I mean, at this point, he was basically famous for a crime. I mean, in a kid's view, you do something bad and it gives you attention. That's only going to reinforce that behavior. Anyways, let's keep going. In June of 2010, a character would appear on the Adult Swim cartoon called Boondocks in the season 3 episode called Smoking with Cigarettes. The character was based off Letarian Milton and his joyride antics back in 2008, and this character was named LaMilton Tayshon. The plot line of this episode revolves around the Milton causing mayhem and mischief around the city with recurring character Riley. Riley is often depicted as being very impressionable in the series and doesn't always pick the greatest of role models to mold himself after much of the time. And much of the time he winds up getting into trouble because of this. But Riley, unlike LeMilton, has a conscience and knows between right and wrong, where LeMilton is depicted as being uncaring of the consequences of his actions, a complete sociopath. And this difference between the two makes for great conflict as Riley is faced with the proposition of sticking with the Milton, doing bad things to increase his street reputation, but also knowing better and fears facing guilt for his actions and also the disappointment and punishment of his granddad. 
The funny thing is, at the end of this episode, like, LaMilton Tayshawn falls off of a building and just ends up dying and, like, vanishing into the ether. And overall, I really have no issues with the direction that they took in this episode. Like, the way that they handled LaMilton Tayshawn and the way that they used this as a commentary on Latarian Milton, I don't feel like the creators of this show purposely glorified Latarian at all. And if anything, they harshly criticized his actions. Which, you know, round of applause for them. I think this was a really good piece of uh, commentary on this subject. Latarian would stay out of the public eye for the next five years until he would appear on the West Palm Beach News Channel again in an interview where they wanted to catch up with Latarian and see how he was doing. And at this time in his life, he was graduating from middle school. This interview depicts Latarian as much more mature as he was as a kid, and it seemed like he was on the up and up saying that he was, you know, trying to be a professional football player, and if that didn't work out well, he was going to join the Navy. Check out this interview. It's graduation day at JFK Middle School in Riviera Beach. Latarian Milton is one of many graduates here who are looking forward to the next challenge. It's going to be good when I get to school in high school because to be able to come on the football team, have some good success there, be able to graduate from there to go to college. He loves school. He loves people. I know from just talking to him that he was sorry for what he did, but he didn't seem to know any better at the time. Every day people live and die, and that day angels was above me to save me before I didn't die. Doing wrong is bad, but doing good, I could be a success in doing dumb stuff. Latarian has big dreams of playing professional football someday, but if that doesn't work out, he says he plans to join the Navy and focus on engineering and technology. Ted White, WPBF 25 News. And at this point, with this interview in mind, it seemed like Latarian had really turned his life around and was well on his way to being a fully adjusted grown man. I mean, he seemed like he had his head in the right place. Well, something would come to light in May 21st of 2017 may have you asking if that's the case at all. A news story surfaced on May 21st, 2017. A Lyft driver reported that he picked up four men and a woman and took them to the destination as requested by the Lyft app. The passenger who had requested the Lyft was Latarian Milton. After arriving to the destination, one of the passengers requested to be dropped off at a different location. The Lyft driver refused the request as they are only permitted to go where the request sent on the app tells them to go. And it was at this point that one of the passengers pulled out a handgun and struck the driver in the back of the head. The driver claimed he got out of the car and the suspect stole his wallet and jacket. After this, Latarian Milton got in the driver's seat of the car and drove off with the Lyft driver's vehicle. This is fucking peak irony right here. It was the request sent by Latarian Milton to Lyft which police used to identify him as one of the suspects as it was linked to his Facebook page. Milton would be arrested days later and would be facing charges of carjacking with a firearm, burglary, and committing a felony while in possession of a firearm. And as far as I know from the information available to me, he would be charged as an adult and is currently being held without bond for the burglary charge. He hasn't faced sentencing yet, and he was only 16 years old at the time that this occurred. I think he's 17 now. The way I see this story and the word I would like to use to describe it is just sad. I don't want to be some kind of social justice warrior here, but I feel like all the attention that Latarian got as a kid as sort of a reward for his behavior when he was really young probably had something to do with this sad outcome that we've come here with. It's becoming full circle, you know, he stole his grandmother's van and now he stole a Lyft driver's car. And who's to say if there was peer pressure involved here? He was only 16 years old at the time. Kids do some dumb shit as teenagers, and let's not completely write off Latarian yet, okay? He hasn't been sentenced yet. I think there's still some redeeming qualities with this kid, especially with the middle school interview. Like, he seems like he could potentially reform himself into a functioning member of society. But what do you guys think about the Latarian Milton story? Uh, leave your comments below and definitely, you know, tell me who you want to hear me talk about next. People have been throwing around this Sammy Classic Sonic fan idea. I think I might have to hop on that. And make sure you guys check out my affiliate Cool Shirts. They got some banging new fall wear on the website. 10% off with code WAVY. Link in the description box. And I want to give a big shout out to all my patrons. Thanks for your guys' continued support. And thanks for being super homie. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.